Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, first, I'll apologize for the light. It is a table lamp that I have removed the lampshade. It's a little brutal and a little rustic, but um, I wanted to get this video filmed. Uh, I've had this idea rolling around for a couple weeks now in my head, and I thought I would finally um, film it and let you guys uh, and share this uh, these thoughts with you guys. So, um, uh, inspiration for, for this, this video came, uh, uh, really a couple days ago at the gym. There's this, um, kind of adult jungle gym kind of thing called a PDX where I think it's PDX. Uh, it's got pulleys and weights and, and bars to help you use your body weight to, um, develop muscle weight as resistance. You know, you, you, uh, lift, lift yourself up, you push yourself and. I find it very useful. Um, I use this thing when there's no one around. I don't want to be judged for my the amount of work I can or cannot do on this machine. So I do it when no one else is around. So there's this one uh, one bar that I use. It's a, a U-shaped bar that is set in the, the front of this um, jungle gym thing. And you just put it into a spot and then you jump up and push yourself up and down to do um, dips to help build up your arms and uh, and shoulders and your back and stuff. And I really enjoy using the machine, I, this thing. I feel really good afterwards. Uh, but I set that bar about, I typically set it about maybe here, about my top of my sternum. And so it's just enough difficulty to jump up there and, and lift myself a few times. Um, when I got there the other night, the bar was set like up here. And I looked at it and I was like, there's no way I can get up there. There's just no way it's not going to happen. Um, and um, it registered in my brain that I was actually afraid of trying to, to do this. I knew I would fail. And um, no one's around. No one's in the room. So uh, here I am afraid of failing myself at the simple effort of lifting myself up. Now, you know, I know that I'm a fairly strong person. You know, I curl a 45 pound dumbbell. Um, you know, one hand, I do my lifts. Um, I'm strong, but this this height just, just um, it seemed impossible for me. So I was uh, gonna move it down a couple pegs so I could do it to a degree I'm comfortable. Being comfortable in my life has never really inspired great change or a great achievement. A position of comfort has really never propelled me towards greatness. <laughs> um, so I, I, I recognize this and I, I'm like, all right, forget it. I'm going to try this. And so I put my hands up there, took a deep breath and jumped. Wonder of wonders. I lifted myself up there. And I dipped myself. I did 12 dips and then I dropped down to my toes feeling like a million bucks. I had achieved something that I just patently knew was impossible. Impossible. A small little effort, nothing crazy. I wasn't running a marathon or, you know, I wasn't in the Olympics or anything, but I didn't think I was, po I was capable of actually doing this. Um, and I, re I recognized my fear. I took a deep breath and I did it anyway. Now, I look back on my life and I think, how many things did I not do because I was afraid? How many boys did I not talk to because I was afraid to, you know? Um, how many vacations were I, was I afraid to go to some exotic location? Or how many times was I afraid to take a job that I didn't feel qualified for? How many things did, did I not do because I was afraid? So where this, why is, why am I talking about this? Because you know, my channel is primarily just about being a flight attendant, right? Um, if you watch my videos, there are lots and lots of comments, all of them being super, super positive, super nice, very uh, complimentary. Um, you guys are super generous with compl compliments. Uh, my um, ego is frequently just soft boiled. So sometimes I need that little lift. I appreciate it. Um, but throughout the comments and definitely in my, the messages I get on Facebook or Messenger, um, lots of you have commented recently, um, that you have a training date or you received your conditional job offer, your CJO, but you're afraid. 
Uh, and I understand. I, I mean, I, I <laughs> when they told me that I, I got my CJO during that interview, I was so elated and then instantly afraid because like, oh my God, now the real work begins, right? I thought it was work getting the CJO, never mind training. I was so afraid. Uh, and if you've watched my video, I cried before every single test. I, I, that's how I relieved my stress. I cried every single time. Uh, I still made it. I, 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 I um, survived. But there's two things I wanted to remind you of. First, um, this isn't happening by accident. Uh, you worked your butt off to get this conditional job offer. And if you're watching this video and you haven't received a CJO conditional job offer, it will come. The work has to be done. You have to do the work. And there is some aspects of luck involved, you know, interviewing with the, with the right person who's uh, amenable to your style of talking or whatever. Uh, but for those people who got their conditional job offer, this wasn't totally by accident. This was no lottery. You did the work to put yourself in the position where someone would recognize your talents and your abilities. Every airline out there wants to be better than it was today. Their job, their goal is to be better tomorrow. They recognize something in you that they saw and said, hey, this, this person's a winner. They can help us achieve our goal. Again, that's not accidental. So I want you to bring that confidence. I want you to remain confident. They wanted you. They need you. So don't try not to bring any more fear into this than you need to. So don't doubt yourself at all. You are capable and they saw it. They recognized it. So I want to give you permission to succeed, really, because you're already a winner. You're a rock star, right? Um, second, you know, um, many people have contacted me asking, hey, how did you memorize all of your airport codes, your city codes? How did you memorize your um, abbreviations and all this airport airline terminology that we're going to have to memorize? How did you, you know, memorize all of this stuff? Some of you actually have to memorize your announcements. God bless you. I like to be able to read mine. But um, the, the sheer number of things that we have to memorize as uh, in-flight trainees for to be a flight attendant, it's vast. There's a lot of things you have to memorize. And it's daunting. Much like looking at that, that bar at the gym for me, I just didn't think I was capable. I just didn't think I had it in me. I didn't. And when I went to training, um, I actually, before I went to training, I got this this um, info packet of information from my airline, and that packet had all of the air, um, airport codes, all the city codes. It had probably six pages of terminology and abbreviations I had to memorize. Me um, military time, which is fairly easy, but there are so many things that they sent me that they said, here, know this before you go to training. Schematics, where all your emergency equipment is. I, I just looked at the A321, the Airbus A321, and went, mm -mm, there's no way. <laughs> there is no way I can do this. I can't memorize this. Never mind the other aircraft. Just looking at this one, there's just no way I can memorize that. Again, much like that bar at the gym, I looked at that and said, there's just no way I can get up there. I took a deep breath, I lifted myself up, gave myself permission to succeed, and I did it. I worked at it and it was hard, but I dropped down to my feet and I felt so great afterwards. When I sat there and I worked, I thankfully I had weeks to memorize these things, but I sat down every day and I did, I plugged away at memorizing my schematics and my airport codes and my terminology. I plugged away at it. And so when I got to training, I succeeded. I remembered what I had to know to pass the tests. Uh, and the thing I wanted to point out, <clears throat> what I wanted to point out uh, is um, you are capable of all of this. I just wanted to remind you 
that you are capable of memorizing all of these airport and city codes and getting 100 of those tests. You're capable of memorizing all of the abbreviations you're going to have to memorize. You will memorize them. Do you know why I know you? Do you know why I know you can do this? Guess. I'll give you a second. <laughs> Kidding. You, I know you can do this because I know that you remember every song that pops up on Spotify, Pandora, or whatever, whatever you listen to. You know every word. Uh, you know, you younger people, you young folks, you know that song Cardi B? You know, these are bloody shoes. I make muddy moves or whatever she says. <laughs> I don't, I'm surprised I remember those two little bits. You can remember Cardi B, the words to Cardi B's songs. You can remember city codes. <laughs> if you're old, older like me and you remember any, any song by Joni Mitchell, The Eagles, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, any of those songs from decades ago, if you remember those songs, you can remember city codes and those airport terminologies and those abbreviations. You know, I remember my, and I'm, you know, I graduated high school in 1987. Um, I remember the songs that we, they played at that senior prom. I remember. I remember the song by heart that I wanted to have them choose as our uh, theme song for our senior prom. I remember so many songs that pop up out of the blue. I may have only heard them a couple times. But somehow I remember these these songs. If you um, there's an, an artist that I love, I love, I I just adore her. Uh, she's English. Her name is I'm gonna mangle her name. It's Imogen Imogene Imogen Heap, H E A P. Um, I just love her music. Uh, it's very quirky and it's always a story. Uh, there's there are some of her songs that are actually like one side of a conversation about. Um, drinking and driving or abuse or something. Very weird. Very interesting storytelling through music. And, you know, I would listen to some of this music while I was studying my um, airport codes and my um, terminology and all those things. Think of the sheer number of songs you remember. You, you have this within you to memorize these simple things. So... Um, I'm talking way too long about this topic. All I wanted to do in this video is give you some encouragement and to remind you that you have it in you to fly through training, get those wings, and then maybe I'll see you in the air when I'm commuting on another airline, or maybe I'll see you in my own airline. Um, that's really it. I just wanted to share these this little story with you and um, my experience and give you permission to succeed you totally have it in you you have it in you i know you do and the airline knows you do all you have to do is remind yourself that you have it within you to succeed okay just go ahead and do it and i am very excited um very excited and very proud of you people who have gotten your cjos <clears throat> In fact, a lot of you who I, I chat with either on Messenger or on these YouTube videos have actually been to training and have already gotten your wings. Um, there's one guy, um, he flies with United. I think his name is Cheryl. Oh, I was going to say his name. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name. He knows who he is. Um, I, I met him in uh, Houston during one of our layovers. And um, like he just showed, he just sent me a picture of his graduating class and I cried. I was just so proud. I was so excited. Um, but um, there I am talking again for too long. So uh, you have a good day, night, wherever it is, whatever it is, where you are. Fly safe and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.